really don't. But and I that, do. That may be the cutting yeah. edge. I mean, that yeah. may be. And I, th I think sometimes um, people in our field are reluctant to develop a relationship with a statistician or the, the stats person in the department. Right. We kind of reluctantly go and say, can you help me with this analysis? Right. And then we get out as fast as we can yeah. once we have our F statistic or our mm -hmm. T's or what, you know, whatever it is. Um, interesting. You had also talked about um, that, that early on you were doing multiple perspective mm -hmm. research. Is this a, a fairly common title? Would, would anybody in MFT identify what multiple pers perspective research is, or is this a, a term that you've coined because it's descriptive of what you do? I guess it's a term, I, I don't know that I coined it, but yeah, I, no, I don't think everybody in MFT would understand multiple perspective so research. So tell us what, what that is. Um, well, it's the idea that if you really want to assess a family, you have to ask everybody in it about it. Mm -hmm. And... Um, what else can I say? That's, that's it. That's yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not just going to ask one person. And my, my guess is that that would be the that would be the case. Let's say I was doing community research and uh, c community impact studies or things mm -hmm. like that. That I would want to assess families, and but I would also want to assess maybe other people in the community who had roles in whatever phenomena was going right. on. Right. Yeah. It's. And is there a, is there a mapping that goes on or a statistical mapping around perspectives and how people report? Phenomena? Mapping. Well, that's maybe a clumsy, yeah. clumsy term. Well, what's interesting that you can do when you have multiple perspectives is get, quote unquote, rid of raider bias. So the whole point for statisticians when you have multiple perspectives is to remove that bias. But to so, me, so that... So me as a researcher, I'm no longer saying, this is what I think all this means. Right. Supposedly, so yeah. The statistics removes that. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but for me, Raider bias is really important. So what you can actually do in, in a structural equation model is create a latent variable for that Raider. So if, let's say, the way I've um, created instruments and used instruments is that um, dad answers questions about his relationship with mom, mom's relationship to him, his relationship with son, son's relationship with him, and son and mom, son and mom, and mom and son, right? So it's reciprocal dyads, basically. And then the latent variable is the differentiation in the dyad between mom and dad dad and mom, blah, 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 blah. And so each person gets to say something about that particular dyad, or directed dyad, is one word they've been using lately. And then as each person gets to say that, then they all, then they, so there are, if we could partition the variance, as they say, a piece of that score is dad's idiosyncratic way of answering things. His Weirdness. His, how he sees it. Right. Um, a piece of it is the true score, whatever that means. And a piece of it is error, just random error. So what you can do is actually create a Raider latent variable that pulls out dad's idiosyncratic variance, so to speak. But it's all relate. It's not random variance because it relates to each other. It can't be random if it's related. <laughs> So you get this Raider measure, for so you can get that for dad, mom, and adolescent. And to me, it's fascinating to look at that. What statisticians want to do is get rid of it, right, because that's really messing up the true score or whatever that means. But I'm fascinated by that Raider bias. What, what makes dad's perspective different? And, okay, so now if I could, and I think Bill Cook has been trying to do that, if I could get, then assess each family and know that this particular dad looks at it that way, and this particular mom looks, and then I have this profile, and then I could look at outcome, right? If I knew how different the perspectives were, then I could look at outcome and say, well, you know, when your perspectives are this skewed or off, whatever, this is what's more likely to happen than if your perspectives are closer. But it's uh, 
it's hard work. So I want to I want to go back now to um, to to the story that you tell about the, the guy at UConn who <laughs> used to, okay yeah. who does this research on parental rejection and warmth. Uh -huh. um, it's easy for me to see your passion mm -hmm. because when we started this interview, I mean, in the hallway, you're saying, "I don't really know what I'm going to say." Right. <laughs> And it's like I asked this question, and you're like, you're into this. Uh -huh. This is very fascinating, and, and it, it taps into a passion for you. Yes. Um, and, and there may be people watching this interview right now who are going, I have no clue what Suzanne right. is saying at all. Um, but it's, it's, it's fascinating to see how you can make this a life's work, and that mm -hmm. one thing has led you to another thing, and you, you keep on going after these big, messy yeah. problems, mm -hmm. these messy, messy questions or messy problems, as, as we talk about. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so hopefully that's what was driving Ron Rohner, I don't know, but that's what drives me. That may be what's driving yeah. you. And yeah. Very cool. Thank you yeah. very much for your time. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that you'd say or things that we've missed or things that you would say in your Oscar acceptance speech? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess as a, a way to sort of respond to this whole clinical work versus research, clinical work versus statistics, um, rift, is, yeah, I was talking about that today, um, more than likely when you take a statistics class, it'll be over your head and you won't like it, and you'll hate it, actually. Are you talking to me personally? Or? Possibly, you too. <laughs> um, I think you are. Because they... <laughs> Because they're completely out of context and and they don't make sense because there's nothing for you to plug into when you're there. I hate the way they're taught. They're often taught in a different discipline. Too. Right. So even if there is something to plug in, there's a disconnect. Right, exactly. And I think what dry you know, I would never have said early on in my career, I need to learn uh, mixture <laughs> modeling or whatever it is called. But what drives me to that are the, the messy problems. And so what I would suggest to students is think outside of the box. Think about what drives you clinically. You know, what, why are you so fascinated by family therapy? And um, then, you know, think about how to assess for whatever it is that you're passionate about. And that probably would involve multiple perspectives. So you are going to have, you're faced with this very messy problem. And then don't get bleary-eyed because, you know, some professor is talking in, you know, Greek letters. It doesn't matter because luckily we have computers to do that. Um, to think more conceptually about it. And, and that's what I, I don't know if I'm lucky enough to be conceptual, but that's where I am. Because as soon as I see a formula, I'm like, what? You get turned off. I do. Yeah, yeah I get glassy-eyed. I read the, you know, I assign books and I try to read in, you know, there's actually a journal called Structural Equation Modeling. And I look through those journals and as soon as I get to a formula, I'm like, well, that's nice. And then they try to explain, you know, what M is and N is and I still get lost. But if I can get any kernel of con something conceptual out of it, that's what helps me. Mm -hmm. um, and don't worry that you don't know the formulas, because luckily we're not in a field where we have to, you know, know the derive formula. them, you know? Right. <laughs> so I, that's what really bugs me. And I think students do get turned off by those courses, and, and we say, oh, well, it's so important that you know this stuff. And it is important that you know it, but I think what's most important is that you know it conceptually so that when you know the computer spits out the result you'll know what that means but that's really all you i don't know i think that's all you need you're reluctant to say that's all you really need right <laughs> yeah because it goes against a lot of what we learn learn yeah. and, and tell and things like that yeah all so, right all right thank you